Welcome, dearest family. We are so glad that you tuned in this morning to celebrate this day with us. Yes, it is a celebration. Today is a good day. It is Good Friday, and we are right there in your homes today to come and celebrate Jesus and Calvary and what He's done for us on the cross. So right there where you are, move your coffee table if you need to, move your couches out of the way just to give you some space this morning and won't you raise your hands with us open up your mouth and just begin to worship worship from your heart this morning father we bring our worship to you oh god true and pure worship father for what you've done on calvary for us we're so grateful for the cross we're so grateful for your blood that was shed for us hallelujah Yes, Jesus. Cause you shed your own blood for me. You gave your life for me. Surrendered everything for me, Jesus. You shed your own blood for me. You gave your life for me. Surrendered everything. Come on and sing it with us. You shed your own blood for me. You gave your whole life for me. Surrendered everything for me, Jesus. You shed your own blood for me. You gave your life for me. Surrendered everything for me. Supernatural, supernatural. He was pierced with nails in his hands. He was pierced with nails in his feet. Father, we thank you for this love. No greater love, oh God. Come on and sing it, every nail. And every nail that pierced your hands and body, you were thinking of me. You endured it for me. Right, they put upon your shoulders. You were thinking of me. You endured it for me. Yeah. And every nail they pierced you and body. You were thinking of me. You endured it for me. And every stripe. Supernatural 
Where would we be? And where would I be? Oh, where would I be? If you had not died on that cross for me, you've captured my heart. And where would I be without you? Sing it, where would I be? And where would I be? Oh, where would I be? If you had not died on that cross for me, you've captured my heart. And where would I be without you? I love you, Father. And I love you because you loved me. I love you. There's no greater love. I love you because you love me. I love you. There's no supernatural father your love supersedes everything and all things oh God your perfect love casts out all fear my God I decree and declare to everyone that is watching right now the supernatural love of God come and invade your home come and invade your mind I cast out all fear this morning with the perfect love of Christ. I cast out all anxiety right now. This is for you this morning. Raise your hands and receive it. I rebuke all fear. I rebuke all anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. I declare the peace of God, the peace that comes, Father, with the cross. I declare your love, Father, that comes with the cross this morning. Invade every home, every home right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and your love is supernatural it's unconditional it's eternal and your love is supernatural it's unconditional, it's eternal. Come on and sing it. 
this morning we call upon the name of Jesus just whisper his name Jesus just whisper Jesus Jesus over your circumstances Jesus over your family Jesus over your finances Jesus over all fear Jesus over anxiety all worry whatever it is that you are facing this morning Jesus Jesus.
Well, good day, family. We greet you here from Naples, Florida, and uh, we're so excited to share the Word of God with you on this Good Friday. What an awesome, awesome day to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it is so amazing what God has done for us. You know, on this good day, it is, it's a good day. Mm. It's a good Friday. And um, God's goodness never ends. The blood of Jesus is still for today. So family, uh, from me, you know, and, and um, our great apostle, my, my sweet lips, we just want to say to you, have a wonderful Easter. Yes. Put God first in everything that you do. Um, it's, a, it's actually such a, an honor mm. to stand here and to speak you know, with our family right. and to impart in our family the word of the Lord. So open up your hearts, open up your, your, your inner being with God this morning and let the Lord come and do what He needs to do. Yes. Let Him do a new thing in you. You know, the blood of Jesus is fresh every single day for us. It's not old, it's not old fashioned, believe me. We trust in the, you know, in the word of God. It's the word speaks. of God has never changed. Yeah. As long as we live the word, speak the word, believe the word. You know, you can, a lot of times you can speak the word, but then we don't believe the word. So if you put those two together and you believe in the word of God, unity comes and God blesses you. So family, enjoy this morning. Enjoy the word. You know, we can still eat of the word, digest the word, and let it become real to you. Let the word of God become real to you today. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. Yes. It breaks every yoke. It breaks sin in your life. It breaks um, disagreements and arguments and, you know, anything that you trust in God for. It, it brings healing to the body. It brings healing to your mind. It brings healing to your heart. Whatever you need, the blood of Jesus is still for today. Amen. And it still speaks life today. So babe, That's I'm wonderful, so man. excited Amen. what the Lord is doing for the family, mm. for New Beginnings Christian Family Church. I love you, my family. Have an awesome Easter and um, stay in the Word. Yeah, you know, it's all about the grace of the Lord. So let's speak about the grace of God today. And we believe that the grace of God is sufficient for you. Yes. I thank God for the blood yes. and for the grace of Jesus yes. Christ upon our life. So we're going to get right into this. Gather your family around. Get the Word of God out. Get the communion cups ready. We're going to have a wonderful time yes. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So thank you so much. And we'll be back on Resurrection Sunday again with you. And it's going to be an awesome service. We believe for miracle signs and wonders and that the Word of God will become alive in your body. So we see you soon. Uh, live again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We believe Amen. the lockdown will stop very soon and that we can get back as a family. We miss the corporate anointing. Yes, yes. We, we miss the family. We miss you so very much. So keep your eyes open when the dates will be released, when we're going to gather again That's very right. soon. That's Amen. Right. You know, uh, that is preparing your hearts now in your homes. And when we get together, it's going to be the greatest revival this world has ever seen. Yes. The devil thought he's got us, but the blood of Jesus covers us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Well, let's get into the word of the Lord. And um, I'm going to share a couple of truths with you regarding the cross of Jesus Amen. Christ today. So let us just pray together. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And as we gather around the word of the Lord, we thank you that you will speak to us, that the mysteries of the cross will be revealed to us, yes. that the covenant of God shall be established in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. All right, so let's get into the word of the Lord today. I would like to uh, share with you the revelation and the mysteries of the cross of Jesus Christ. And I believe that you will now be touched by the presence of God and the anointing of God upon your life and uh, bring a revelation to you that I believe has been passed down through the centuries, through apostles and prophets and uh, impartation to take place in your life. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 5, verse number 17. And you should know the scripture because this is one of my favorite scriptures that I've been preaching a lot from when I preach from the grace of God. It says here, for if by one man's offense death reigned through that one man, much more those who receive the abundance of grace, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. 
Listen to the scripture here. It says, we receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. They will reign in life. You're about to reign in life, not because of your works, not because of what you've done, not because of what you have achieved, not because of all your degrees, but because of the grace of the Lord and the gift of righteousness. Wherever you are, I want you to say this as loud as you can. Say, I am the righteousness of God. Say it one more time. I'm the righteousness of God. When you know that have a revelation on the love of God and the righteousness of God, you will understand that God's, God's uh, love for you is so beautiful and so pure that nothing can separate you from the love of God. He loves us so very much. He's given his life for us. He's given his, his whole deity for us so that we can live. I love to see how Jesus Christ, you know, brought comparisons and, and re brought restoration for the body of Christ. When he died on the cross, you know, he died naked so that you can be clothed in righteousness. He died young so that you can have a long life. He had no children so that you can have children. He died a poor man so that you can be rich. He died with sin that you can be free from sin. It's all because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. For, why, for by one man's offense, death reigned, how much not more those who receive the abundance of grace. The problem is that we as believers think we must do, do, do things to impress God. I want to tell you this, that nothing you do Nothing you say, nothing of works can impress God. The only thing that impresses God is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that was shed on that cross is the only thing that impresses the Father. Through the blood of Jesus, you have been made the righteousness of God. You have now a covenant with God. And because of this covenant, we are heirs of this promise. We have been made partakers of the kingdom of God. We are seated in heavenly places. We're not seated on this earth with all the natural things going on. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And when Jesus cried out, he says, it is finished. That means it's done. There's nothing you can do. Anything more added to it to embrace God or for God to love you more. He loves you completely. He loves you whole. And you may sit there and say, but, you know, I'm a sinner or, you know, uh, I've, I've done so many wrong things and, you know, I'm still struggling with addictions. How can this God loves me? The Bible says this, while we were yet sinners, he loved us and died for us. There is nothing can, that can save separate you from the love of God. The Bible says, no demons, no hell, no princes, principalities, height, death, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I want you to get this message. The message of the cross is simply this. He loves you and his grace is sufficient for you. And this day, that's my prayer, is that you will know and have a revelation of the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you wherever you are watching from. He has he absolutely adores you. He's crazy in love with you. With all your hang-ups and with all your faults and with all your mistakes, he loves you. You know, when I go and take a shower, I don't stand outside of the shower and then put soap on me and then get into the shower and put on the water and then washes, wash me. No, I get in the shower, dirty, and then the water cleanses me. And then I start applying the soap. That's how the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is. Once you walk into the, into the shower of forgiveness, the forgiveness power of Jesus comes and it washes you. It cleanses you. And the word of God is like the soap. It cleanses your mind, cleanses your heart. And you start walking in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing, nothing, nothing in this world that can separate you from the love of God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter with what things you struggle with today. The the love of God is sufficient for you. Nothing can separate that from your relationship with God. I want to read you Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 12. He says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering... He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. This is the finished work of the cross. He was offered as one sacrifice forever. 
And through that one sacrifice, you are perfected forever. This is not the gospel of inclusion or the gospel once saved, always saved. But you need to see this, that this price has been paid. And once he's paid this price, he went and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And nobody can take him away from there. And you are seated in heavenly places with God. When Jesus said, it is finished. That means all the requirements, all the stuff was done. You know, when we uh, finished our, um, or when, when we, when we uh, paid our last installment for our home, uh, and we pay, put the, deposit, uh, the, the, the final payment down, that payment was done, that bond was paid up, my house was paid up, it was finished. I didn't phone the bank the next month and, and ask them, uh, are you still okay? Do you still survive? Do you want me to still carry on? Because, you know, how are you going to survive without my payment? No, it was done. It is finished. And that's the, the power of the cross. When Jesus said it is finished, every requirement and every work that we have done based upon religious works was done and taken care of. You can just walk in the love of God. You must have a revelation of the love of God. When you understand the love of God, you will have prosperity. You will have total victory. You will have total provision for your life. That is the love of God. He loves you so much that he will not let any harm come to you. He loves you so much that there will be no sickness falling upon you. He loves you so much that you will not lack anything. That is the love of God that we are talking about. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 4 to verse number 6, it says this. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Family, we need to understand that the grace of the Lord was shed on that cross for us. And on this Good Friday, this is what we are celebrating. We're celebrating the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're celebrating the cross. We're celebrating the victory that was won on that cross for us. You have been made perfect. You are saved by the grace of God. The love of God is being poured out into your heart. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Even when we walk away, he's still faithful. Even when we drift away from the love of God, he's still there. He draws us in by his love. No condemnation preaching has ever got people saved. The love of God gets people saved. You know, when Peter, he was cussing and swearing and he was a sinner and he walks on that uh, on, on the uh, beach and the Lord Jesus came there and he says give me your boat and he gave him his boat and he says go and cast your nets on the other side and we know the story that when he came back the boat was full and the nets started breaking because of the great harvest that he received by obeying the word of the Lord and the Bible makes a very interesting statement he says when he got off the boat he fell on his knees and he says woe unto me I'm a sinful man who are you you see it's the grace of God it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Jesus didn't preach one word of repentance. Jesus didn't preach one word of condemnation. He did not preach one word of you going to hell. He just showed him goodness and the goodness of God leads people to repentance. I love the grace of God. I love the cross. There's nothing as powerful as the love of God on this day and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about uh, the woman that committed adultery. The Pharisees were standing there and they were having rocks in their hands and they're about to stone her to death. Uh, the Bible says this, they caught her in the act of adultery. That's what the law does. They wait until you sin and then they, they, and, and then they want to uh, take you out and put you under uh, condemnation and all that stuff. The grace of God stops you before you sin. The grace of God will stop you before you enter into that dimension. But anyway, we, uh, we see this woman committing adultery. They're picking up the stones. They're going to throw her now and stone her to death and she's going to die and Jesus Christ walks up grace of God shows up and he says who of you have no sin those of you who do not have sin you cast the first stone and, the, and the, the, the rocks just started falling down as they started walking off and she was left alone with grace and Jesus walked to, uh, bend down and he wrote on the ground we don't know what he wrote but I can just imagine the same finger that wrote the Ten Commandments is now in the, in the New Testament writing 
casting something again on stone. And it might have been the grace of God, might have been the love of God. I don't know what he wrote down there. But all I know is that she walked away there and he says, go and sin no more. And she walked out of that town and she started becoming the greatest evangelist for the kingdom of God. God can turn anybody around and change a person from from a sinful lifestyle to the greatest evangelist. On this Good Friday that we are celebrating Easter, we're celebrating the cross. We're celebrating the goodness of God. We celebrate the mercies of God. We celebrate the anointing of God. The cross of Jesus Christ made the difference. If we look at the life of Zacchaeus, a short man sitting in a tree, and Jesus walked past, and Jesus stopped, and he says, I want to have lunch with you today. And he climbed out of the tree, and Jesus went to his house. Jesus did not say anything about, you're going to die, you're going to be burning in hell, you know, you are a sinful man because Zacchaeus was a sinner. The Bible just said Jesus sat there and he ate with them. And the next moment, Zacchaeus jumped up and he says, everything I stole from people, I'm going to return to them. Anything I've taken from people, I'm going to restore four times more. And he started becoming a giver. What happened there? The grace of God just walks in. I've seen this as a, as, as a minister of the gospel through two decades of having a church. Let me say this. There are people who cannot give their tithes and offerings because they think it's law and they struggle with that but people who live under the grace of God for them it's the easiest thing to give like Zacchaeus he just gave he just gave he just gave because of the grace of God we see the woman that committed adultery she became the greatest evangelist because of the grace of God we see the we, we see the lifestyle of Peter a sinner a cussful man he turned around and become became one of the greatest apostles because of the goodness of God and I want to give this to you today the cross of Jesus Christ made the difference nothing you do no works can impress God the only thing that impresses God is the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. And when you can walk out of condemnation into the grace of God, you will have a Christian walk that is free. That is, it is a wonderful walk in the presence of God. Because you know what? The devil will always condemn us. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you from the morning till the evening. He will accuse you of your sins. He will accuse you of the things you, you, you made wrong. I remember you know before I had this revelation on the grace of God is that I would go and pray for three hours and I would come out of my prayer closet and um, the first voice I would hear is not God's voice and it's not my wife's voice. It's the devil's voice. This is what he would say. Your dad used to pray eight hours. Benny Hinn prays 12 hours. Then I would fast seven days and he would say, but Benny Hinn fasts 40 days. And the condemnation and the accusations keeps on falling, falling, falling upon you. And eventually you feel you're so bound by works. I have to pray more. I have to fast more. I have to give more. I have to do all these things more. And now all of a sudden my Christian walk became a walk, a, a, a religion, a works orientated relationship. And when the grace of God came, I became free of that. Let me tell you this. I want to pray now. Not because of, of, because of another man praying. I want to pray because I have relationship with him. The grace of God enables me now to pray. The grace of God enables me to fast. The grace of God enables me to be a giver. The grace of God enables me to preach. Now we do it not out of works, not out of demands, but out of the grace of God. Out of the fact that I can walk in the presence of God. God right now and obtain grace and mercy at the throne of God. That is how awesome the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is. And I want to give you another two or three scriptures here. And I want you to, to hear this, uh, the word in Colossians chapter 2, verse number 14. He says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, and he made them a public spectacle, triumphing over them in it. I want to read you again verse 14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. Think about that. Here's all the requirements. This is what you must do. Well, having wiped out those requirements, that was contrary to us, having nailed it to the cross. 
Now look at this. He nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. The devil loses his power the moment you know that I'm free from all the requirements of the law. I can walk free in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians, uh, Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 3, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. It says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious... So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceed much more in glory. Now, I want to close with this. And I want to give this to you this today, wherever you're watching from. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because you're not under the law, but under the grace of God. People under the grace of God, for them it's like impossible to walk a life and live a lifestyle of, of sin. Because they're not bound by that thing. The law forces you to commit sin. But the grace of God sets you free. I want to close and give you a couple of things on the mysteries of the cross. The first thing you must understand is that Jesus gave up his reputation for your reputation. Jesus was willing to lose his reputation, a sin, become a sinful man, so that I can have a reputation of a child of God. The second thing is Jesus became a servant so that I can become a son of God. This is beautiful. Jesus became like a man, tempted in all ways, so that we can overcome in this life, that we can have a victorious life. He was tempted in all areas of his life, every area of his life. But he faced that. He overcame it and showed to us, you can overcome, overcome all these temptations if you abide in the spirit of obedience. And Jesus humbled himself on that cross. On that cross, he died naked so that we can be clothed with righteousness. Like I said in the beginning, he died young so that you can have a long life. He died without children that you can have children. He died a man so that we can be called the sons of God. The grace of God is so sufficient and so powerful to us. The Bible says here Jesus was obedient unto death and he laid down his life for us. And a name was given to him, a name that is above every other name. And in that name, there is salvation for each one of you. On this Good Friday, we're going to partake of the communion now and I want you to get your, your communion cups ready and the elements and we're going to take it together and we're going to believe God on this cross, on, on, on this uh, Good Friday, that the cross of Jesus Christ will become a reality to you. For me, the cross is not something brutal. It's not something that my Savior died on. It's the greatest day, the greatest thing ever. This is what separates Christianity from any other religion. This day, Good Friday, the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, it's what separates Christianity. All other religions, they, their Savior died, but He never was resurrected. His, his bones are still there. Our Savior died today, went into hell, took the keys of the kingdom, came out again on Sunday and he says, now I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven and on this earth. And authority has been given to us. And I pray that this authority will come upon you and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ will be evident in your life from this very moment. So we're going to take the communion and then also I want you to get your special offering ready because we cannot pay for the cross. We cannot pay for salvation. But the Bible says where our treasure is, there is our heart. And, we are, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to place our treasures before God because our heart is there. Lord, I give you my heart in, 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 in the symbol of my finances and all the details on the screen and you can sow into that uh, directly after the service and bring a special offering and just say thank you, Father, for your grace 
grace. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the cross. And because of that, here is my heart signifying my finances. And as we sow today, the blessing of the Lord shall come upon your life. So I'm going to let you partake of the communion by yourself there. And uh, if the fathers are looking, watching this program, I want you to partake of that. Share it with your family. And if you do not have a husband in the, in the home, you as the wife, you are the head of the house now. Please share it with your family and your friends around you. Let's partake of the communion. Now, I'm just going to do a special prayer. And after this, you're going to partake on your own. And you're going to bring an offering. Show your family how to do this offering. Let them do it with you. Because this is the moment as families we're coming together to partake of the body and to give a special seed of sacrifice to the Lord. Father, I bless everyone that has been watching. I pray that the revelation of the grace of God will come upon them. May we not operate in works. May we operate in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not come because of how good we are or what we have achieved. We come purely by the grace of God. We come before your throne where you can, whereby we can obtain mercy and grace in the time of need. And I release the spirit of grace. I release the spirit of the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ to come and wash and sanctify and clean every single person watching this program in the name of Jesus. I pray for that offering as they take that offering and they sow it now. I bless that offering in the name of Jesus. May this offering bring forth supernatural wealth upon their lives in Jesus name and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you, family, for watching. You can go ahead and partake of the communion and bring your offerings and your tithes to the Lord today. We'll see you on Resurrection Sunday. God bless you.